All right, we have Jesse James Wallace joining us on the program as he gets ready to take on Joe Selecki next Tuesday, July 9th, and the headliner of Dana White's Contender Series, episode number 19. James, how are you, man? I'm great, man. Thanks for having me. Every fight brings new stress. Um, the most stressed out I've ever been was before my, my first fight back coming off my first loss. So I was 3-0, I lost and to, to a really good fighter, and then I came back and I was fighting a guy that was clearly a comeback fight. You know, I think he was 5-9 and nine at the time, so not the best record. Um, and I knew the do or die situation I was in. You know, I, I know that if I can't beat somebody that's just doing this for a little bit of side money or, you know, for, just for fun that I, I probably can't do this to the next level. So I remember repeating the same things. I can't do this. If I can't beat him, I have to quit. If I can't beat him, I have to quit. I don't want to quit. I'm not done. And then I feel like if I execute my game plan, it doesn't really matter what he does. Yeah, Joe's an exciting fighter. You're an exciting fighter. There's a lot on the line here. It's a headline spot, so a lot of eyes going to be upon you, ESPN+. Plus. What will it mean to you to, to earn a UFC contract? Have you allowed yourself to kind of visualize yourself sitting in the chair after the fight and hear, seeing Dana White talking to Laura Sanko and you standing up and wondering, does he mean I'm getting a contract? You kind of have that hesitative moment where you stand up. Have you, have you thought about that at all? I'd be lying if I said I didn't. But, yes, I have thought about it. Um, I feel like if I just fight how I fight and uh, everything's going to take care of itself uh, and I will get the contract. and. Uh, my opponent is Jesse Wallace. I haven't watched a ton of footage just yet because we're not in that you know intense part of camp just yet. So I've just looked at his record. I've looked at you know some articles and stuff. I know that he's really sound on the ground. I know he uh, has I think all finishes by submission. So that's interesting for me because you know that's how most of my wins have come. So I think uh, it's a it's a fight where I can really show how well rounded I am, and I think it's a fight where if it hits the floor, it can show the level of jiu-jitsu that two guys can bring in MMA. You know, I don't think anybody deserves anything, you know, but uh, I know I'm putting in the work to earn it. And uh, through 20 years of hard work, you know, I've been doing this since I'm six years old. I've never taken a break. I've never taken an off season. The only time I've ever taken off was because I got staff and I took three weeks, I think, when I was a little kid, you know. Uh, I don't drink alcohol, don't really eat bad food, but on a cheat day, like, this is my life. This has been my life for 20 years. And it's gotten more intense as the levels have grown, but this has been everything for 20 years. I think I've earned that through, through my past actions. You know, I think sometimes opportunity comes and guys train hard for that opportunity, but it's too little too late. I know that my whole life has uh, led up to this. And You got great fucking cardio. You are fucking ready for five fucking rounds. You hear me? Let's go. Hey. I got to go down to Fortis MMA, which is, it's kind of crazy. They're like this, this gym that, you know, it's, it's this guy, Safe Saud, who, you know, they've got like 13 people in the UFC right now, and they're all homegrown people. You're, it's either you're in or you're out. Probably two, three years away where all of a sudden, out of nowhere, they might have two, three champions out of that gym. All my fighters, almost every one of them, I've done that with. Almost every one of them. And I believe that to have that real connection with the athlete, you got to go through those wars together, man. You got to raise these guys up. I mean, they're like my kids. I'm so invested and they're so invested. We're both invested because we've come up through this journey together. And, you know, people say that all the time. I'm proud about it. Double digit numbers of UFC fighters, homegrown athletes. Every one of our fighters is from Texas, except for Macy, who moved when she was 2-0. Not stand around and not put your back against the fence. Only when you do that. The, the kick was planned 100%. The, uh, he, it was... Zero, zero! <laughs> Uh, we codenamed it Zero. It's always a really learning experience. You know, fighting Kevin was a, was a real big learning experience. It was like one, I need to work on my cardio, and two, just the uh, the vibe that he brought in the cage was something I never uh, experienced before, and it really threw me off because he came in like real relaxed. I was used to going in fights, just oh, I'm angry, I'm gonna punch you in the face, and you know what I mean? Yeah, and he he came in to fight so relaxed, like like he was he was comfortable. And I never seen somebody with that. Uh, that level of comfort in the cage and it really 
it really opened up my mind and perspective on fighting. It's like, I don't have to be all tense and kill mode, like, all the time, you know what I mean? You, you can go in there, relax, and still do what you gotta do. So, like, he, I, I thank him for that asshole. There's no drama, man. When, when, you, when you orchestrate the environment the way that you want it to, and you don't have all these variables coming, you're gonna come in and you're gonna fucking do the practice that we do. You're gonna be on time, you're gonna show up, you're gonna do exactly what everybody does from the fucking amateurs to the pros. If you're gonna fucking call me and tell me you wanna come train with me and then tell me how it's gonna be, like, shit, that's not how life works, right? You need to back him up with a jet, he's fine. This kid, this kid never dies. Joe Peterson, I'm 17 and 8 as a professional martial artist, and I fight for the UFC. That's good, the referee's got to stop it. Oh, Joe Peterson wins the world championship. People that know my story uh, know how big that was for me because I fought for legacy um, in the past. You know, I've been uh, the victim of knockout of the year. The dream comes true for Stephen Peterson. Um, at the same same year, uh, I went through a divorce. It was really rough on me. I kind of hit rock bottom that year. So I, I humbled myself. I went back there, um, started from the bottom, worked my way up. Um, since training was safe, I went 4-0 with, uh, with no damage, just running through people, kind of fixed a lot of holes in my game, and then uh, ended that with the, the fifth victory, which was the LFA title. Man, I tell my guys this. I love them, but I go, I'm not your friend. I'm your coach. I'm not your fucking friend, right? I'm here to make you the best you've ever been, take you the furthest you've ever been, and push you to the limit to be a champion. And I don't really think being friends, you know, with your fighters and hanging out and shooting shit and, and you know, going to their house, that's just not me. Uh, I got plenty of friends. I got a family. I got kids. I got shit to do. So... For me, that line is there. I'm the head coach. I always tell them it's a dictatorship, not a democracy. I say it all the time. And if you don't like it, there's the fucking door. Definitely, that was the goal from the beginning. I didn't really, um, I didn't look past that. Whenever I made it to the UFC, I think I made the mistake of just being um, really happy that the UFC pulled me in. You know, um, it was a crappy notice. It was like nine day notice. Uh, up a weight class against uh, someone. He was 92, but he's uh, a really tough opponent. And, you know, um, you know, looking back, you know, I wish I could have had a little bit of a, um, a better build up. You know, I wish I would have gotten either a loss before the UFC experience or somehow, you know, I would have had a little bit more time before I made it in. You know, I didn't put enough work in or whatever it was. You know, I didn't, I didn't improve it fast enough. Um, before before that fight, and you know, it didn't go my way either, really. You know, even though it was a draw, um, you know, I think I did better than my other fights, but you know, it was definitely not an awesome performance. You know, your goals that you know that I made it there so quick, like so fast, without any problems. You know, I made it to nine and zero in less than two years. I made it to the UFC two years into my pro career, which I knew I, w I needed to really improve, and I thought that I could just win, you know, four or five fights and then come back and. Um, you know, I went on a little win streak. And took a really, really big loss because I thought that, um, you know, that I was just better than everyone else at the UFC and had a slugfest with a really tough striker, which is uh, Kevin Aguilar. He's now in the UFC and uh, he dropped me. Oh! Then I had to really be like, oh man, is this, you know, is this really what I want to do? You know, I could really get knocked out, I can get submitted. Um, you know, it was definitely, that was a rough loss whenever I lost my, that was like my first real loss to me. Man, I, I would do this for nothing, and I had done this for nothing. I fought pro fights for no money, you know, for just ticket sales. Um, I don't think there's anybody that wants it as bad as I do. I really don't believe that, because here's the thing that I always say is, if it was you and a coach, and you went into the room with, your opponent and his coach, and you fought, and no one knew the result but you and your coach, and you, and the other guy, would you do it? I really don't believe there's a lot of people that would sign up for that, but I know for a fact I don't 100% be in that room because I want to know for myself, you know, and I don't think there's anybody that wants it as bad as I do. I have to prove this to myself. Aside from proving it to her, and proving it to my coaches, and the people that support me, 
it, it, when it boils down to it in that cage, I have to prove to myself that I can do this. And I think about that every single day. I don't think, I don't think anybody else can say the same. You know, not many. Um, definitely not him. <laughs>